Maokai is the second best win rate support right now, and the best engage and tank support, and I think he's underutilized. He is the number 34th most played support. That's off meta, right? Anyway, with a win rate that high, it's a tragedy that people don't play him more, and I'm gonna tell you about him. I mean, even Huey has more picks of support than he does, and he's still way. But Maokai has everything that's needed to be a great and great support. He has good CT, great bush control and warding with his E, one of the best and most high impact ultimates in the game. However, he does lack a bit of damage and requires a follow up, is vulnerable when engaging and hmm, that's I guess that's really it. I really can't think of anything else. Maybe that's why he's so good. Now, his, his kit makes him really good for being in lane. His passive is the good suck. Every so often, Maokai can attack the enemy and suck the life out of him. He is also a sub and a dom, as the cooldown is reduced whenever he is hit with an ability and whenever he casts an ability that's hit. That's the best of both worlds. Maokai's Q is kind of force one. It may not be drywall, but Maokai will punch the ground, knocking away anyone that's near him, and he sends a small shockwave out that deals damage. His W is peekaboo. I'm coming for you. Maokai disappears into the ground, then and travels with the target. He pops back up, deals damage, and roots the target. Get it, root, because he's a tree? His E is the adorable walking ward. You want to use your E to toss your little minions into a brush. Then, once someone gets in range, they run towards that nearby enemy and explode. They also give vision and last for 30 seconds. A nice long range ward. They also deal less damage if they're not thrown into a bush. His ult is the last march of the Ents. You slam the ground, send out a massive wave of five roots that travel for what seems like forever. Then, the root that goes out will root the first thing it hits. So, as an enemy team, you have a choice. You can either group up together or you all get rooted. Neither one is great for them. Now, moving on from there, runes are kind of what you would expect. Aftershock, because you have a a ton of CC, font of life or ally healing, conditioning or bone planning to be healthier, and overgrowth, because we're a tree. Then for secondary tree, I would say you do you, precision what it suggests, but I like to do red tree for that ultimate hunter. And then any other rune. Then for your support build, radiant virtue and ever shroud are usually your two options. I like ever shroud because it's so cheap, but it will be gone soon, so I guess I'll have to learn to build differently. Demonic is an option for damage, but pretty much it's more like a fifth item. Everything else other than that is just going to be tank. Now, Maokai isn't one of those mechanically technical champions, so we did it! We're in the game and we're going to take this pauldron and these mixed drinks because we can't forget to water those plants. Now, honestly, we really don't want to do anything level one. I usually take Q just in case you get engaged on. E is fine, but then you just kind of push back your all-in engages until level three because you need your WQ to engage. If you do do that, then level two is when you want to try and engage. You walk up W to get on top of the enemy, then walk a bit behind them and Q so you knock them back towards your ADC. That will usually get a summoner out of someone and if they used it early while you're engaging and your W just kind of goes all the way to it towards that then they're a little stuck because oh lord he coming but once your sapperlings are available to you then you can use them most of the time that just means the brushes are yours they don't deal a ton of damage level one but i still recommend leveling q first because it still scares people away because oh no what if i take 50 damage but really it's just a good tool for throwing as a long distance ward if you don't want to walk over to the enemy's bush just in case they might poke you out or something then you just throw it over there and usually they won't try and clear it now your e is just really a perk but what you really want to do is you want to be that engaged support you can try and poke a tiny bit except for your e which you really just doesn't deal a ton of damage but hey at least it gives you bush control now something i forgot to mention with your runes you can try and use hex flash as one of your secondary things so you hex flash over them so you can w just even more deadly but it's not needed but if the enemy walks close you really just want to do the same thing w to them walk behind them q to knock them back towards your adc it's extremely reliable and a great way to start your engages but once you hit level six the enemy no longer has the option of moving past the middle of the lane especially if you're already ahead if they are getting a little frisky just throw all your alt run at them and they can't get away once you hit them with your alt you just do the same thing w to them q them back you know, rinse and repeat. And that's really it. Really simple to play. Just get kills, push lanes, get plates, get towers. Now let's take a look at that mid game. Now in the mid game, you really want to take advantage of your saplings like you did in lane. You get your three wards, one vision ward, and usually about three saplings before they start disappearing. So that gives you seven wards instead of the typical four. But really you just want to start roaming. And you do get some benefits when you're roaming. I mean, you can kind of do this in lane, but it's a bit harder. If you're going into the lane from the side, you want to cast your alt to zone them away from running away. Then they have two options, get caught by you or or don't run away. Either way spells death for them. You can't do roaming, you can't do ganks, you can't do pushing, but you're really just a team fight monster. I firmly believe that you want to be the main engage for your team. You want to be that front line. You can kind of peel your ADC, but you really want to cast your alt, walk forward, 
and then use your other abilities to lock down and push back a key target so that really makes fights a bit easier for you. Something to remember if you do engage without your ult, your E's do slow, so if you throw your E and it knocks against the champion and deals damage, it will slow them, so it gives you an opportunity to catch up and then do your full combo. But really, that's all you want to do. You want to stay with your team, ready to ult, ready to fight, just be there for objectives, and then when you ult, you watch as they run in fear from the last march of the Ents. Ba, 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 ba. And that's it. We did it. We won the game. And if you like this video, check out as we terrorize the Rift as the scariest champion in League of Legends. Talk to you later.